In this video, we're going to take a look at Organic Studios' Edgar Allan Poe. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion. This is a bold red with a bit of a lean towards maroon. Now, as maroon was the color of my speed team that I skated on as a child, it does bring back some very fond memories, which is always a good thing to me when using an ink. Now, as a red, it is, as I said, bold without screaming or being obnoxious on the page. Generally, I see the same tones regardless of what pen I'm putting it into which is nice to know exactly what you're going to get when you write with an ink, to not have to pick and choose at, but it needs this pen. So this ink has got to step up. It does shade nicely and fairly consistently, rare for red inks. So I like this ink, even though I generally go for non-shading reds. It pulls it off very well and looks like nice the entire time. I like to change things up by using a different pen each day. Today that pen is a Waterman graduate with a fine nib. It's inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. To see how I arrived at that opinion, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the fine nib, we get a beautiful tone here. We get no feathering, no spreading. We get some shading. This just about shades like it should be a green. I think the ink is confused because it is doing such a beautiful job constantly in and out. I'm surprised. Not very often does a red do this. Looking at the medium nib, we get the same tone that we had with the fine. It still doesn't feather. It still doesn't spread. It still gives great shading through all of the writing. Really adds a lot of character to what's there. Makes it feel like I write smart things. And I'm a dummy an awful lot. And this kind of thing really helps out, especially when you're using it as a second color in notes. Looking at the double broad, we get really the same tone that we had with the fine and the medium. It does have a slightly different look, but when you really compare in those range of tones, it's just the thicker line that's making it look different. Some different character to it for those lines. No feather, no spread, absolutely shading like a monster the whole way. Looking at the back of the page, we see a very well-behaved ink that has no bleeding, no ghosting, easily using the back of the page. 
to have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Pelican M120 idyllic blue with a fine nib. A Pelican P200 with a medium nib. A Pelican M205, the duo highlighter, with a double broad nib. The next writing sample is done on a Wright Pads reporter pad. Looking at the fine nib on this non-fountain pen paper, we get largely the same tone as we had with the Clairefontaine. It doesn't feather, it doesn't spread, it does shade, though it doesn't shade as well as it did on the Clairefontaine, but it would be surprising if it did on this paper that's a bit more absorbent. Beautiful performance here. Looking at the medium nib, we get the same tone as the fine. It has no feather, it has no spread because this ink is performing so well. I don't know why more people really aren't looking at this. It shades the entire way through about as well, maybe just a little bit better than the fine did, not as well as the Clairefontaine, and yeah, that's gonna be expected, but look, it's beautiful as it goes. Looking at the double broad nib, this is where I expect to expose some weakness of this ink. <clears throat> I was wrong. It's the same tone. Maybe a little bit darker in general, but we're getting all of the same tone ranges as we had with the fine and the medium. It's not feathering, it's not spreading, it is shading. We're just getting a lot more of the darker tones and less of the lighter tones. What can you say when something does this good? Looking at the back of the page, we see the well-behaved ink with no bleeding, no ghosting, easily letting us write on the back, doubling our page count a notebook. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The next writing sample is done in a Field Notes reporter's notebook. Looking at the fine nib, it is just a tad bit lighter than we had with the Clairefontaine. Only a tad. It's not feathering. It's not spreading. It is shading. You can definitely see it going on there. It's not shading as standout as it did on the last paper, that right pad, or on the Clairefontaine, but it is still there on non-fountain pen paper. Looking at the medium, we get the same tone that we had with the previous papers, which is a little bit darker than we're getting here with the fine. It's not feathering. It's not spreading. It is shading. It's shading about as well as it did on the right pad, not as well as on the Clairefontaine, better than it did in the fine on this paper. Can we see how strong this ink is? Can anything slow it down? I don't think so. Looking at the double broad nib, we get about the same tone that we had on the right pad. Now, we do get a little bit of feathering. You see it in the L of learn. You see it in the T of two, in the second D of add. You see it a lot in the second line. A lot of tiny feathering going on. This pen is used really to bring out some of those problems. No spread, not really shading much. Decent tone, but... Don't use a double broad in a reporter notebook then. 
Looking at the back of the page, we're still seeing a very well-behaved ink that is not bleeding through, is not ghosting, is easily letting you write on the back of the page. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. And here we see the results of the resistance test. The next writing sample is done in a Portage reporter's notebook. Looking at the fine nib, we get about the same tone that we had with the last paper. We get no feather, we get no spread, we get less shading than we did with the fine on the last paper, which is a lot less shading than we had with the Clairefontaine. It's being solid as a red. This is definitely not my favorite in what I've seen. This might be one of my least favorites in how it's performing the fine nib on this paper. Just the tone. Looking at the medium nib, it is a little darker than we had with the fine, more on line with what we had with the last paper. Really, back to the tone that we would expect with this ink. So you see it doesn't change very often. Is it feathering? No. Is it spreading? No. Is it shading? Eh, some. <laughs> some. Not incredible, not as well as even on the right pad, but it is shading the tiniest bit. So this is not a paper I typically use wanting shading, and there's only a little here. Looking at the double broad nib, we get about the same tone that we've had from the double broad on previous papers, which is a bit darker than we have here on this paper. Is it feathering a tiny bit in a couple spots, which is strange. This paper doesn't do that very often. But in the F of figures on the second line, you will see it some. And that's largely where I see it. So it is there a tiny bit. It's not spreading. It is shading. And it's shading, I think, better than it did with the other nibs on this paper. Looking at the back of the page, we still have it being very well behaved with no bleeding and almost no ghosting. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Ackerman Dutch Masters number seven. Here is Diamine Peach Haze. Here is Krishna Sindor. Here is Pelican Ruby. The next writing sample is done in an Office Depot reporter's notebook. Looking at the fine nib, we get a repeat of that tone from the last paper that I didn't care for as much for what this ink can do. Now, as far as its performance, it is feathering a little bit. It is spreading a little bit. This paper has always had trouble with fountain pen ink. And again, once this year is over with it, I'm done with this paper. It's not shading. It's not bringing out any of the best qualities. In fact, as a red, it looks a bit faded. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than we had with the fine. It is feathering. It is spreading. It is giving a couple moments of shading, but just a couple moments and a warning sign with this paper because of what that tends to mean. While it's darker, I don't feel like this ink is really giving us the same kind of effect as its beauty that we've had on other papers. But this paper does kind of not show well for a lot of inks. Looking at the double broad, the first thing I really want to point out is the tone 
It's not a red. It is very maroon leaning. And I really do like the tone. That's going to be about it. It does feather. It does spread both just a little bit. It does not shade. It's just there. The color's beautiful, but nothing else about this with a double broad on this paper is. Looking at the back of the page, we had a lot of spots, especially with that double broad that I had to circle because it bled through, hitting the page underneath. And we can see why with all of the ghosting, you can't write on the back of the page. While it's nice to compare it to other inks in the same color family, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a blue-black ink by Roher & Klinger Lipsiger Schwartz. Here is a gray ink by Pen BBS number 130 FDR. Here is a blue ink by Omos Blue. Here is a shimmering black ink by Diatramentis Velvet Black Gold. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the fine nib, we're getting a little bit better tone than we had on the paper. We're not, on the last paper, we're not getting any kind of a maroon lean. It's definitely looking more of a faded red. Not my favorite tone that I'm seeing with this ink. It is feathering just a little bit, kind of manageable though. It is spreading a very little, totally manageable. If it's not bleeding, this is going to be a great ink for this paper. You're just not getting all that great tone. Is it shading? No, it's not. And not shading on this paper is a good thing. Looking at the medium nib, it is a tiny bit darker than the fine. It is feathering a little, and it's manageable. It is spreading a little, and it's manageable. It is not shading at all. And it's not expected. So, yeah, that's what it is. Looking at the double broad, you say, bring on the pain. The tone's a little bit darker than we had with the medium. It is a little bit more of a red tone. So there's the good thing we get to start with. It feathers a lot. It spreads a lot. It does not shade. It looks like you're writing with a felt tip marker. I just, I, 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 ew. Looking at the page underneath, these dots are only from the double broad. The medium and the fine did not bleed through, although you could not write on the back of the page because of the amount of ghosting. So what nib and pen do I think is going to give the best writing experience with this ink? So looking at how this pen wrote, and I did wind up, you know, getting the ink out of those pens and putting it into a couple of others and yes please name it this always writes good it is a dealer's choice and a great dealer's choice because you can put it in your favorite pen and if you like this tone you're going to be happy with what you see i love being able to say that about inks when they are so consistent in their performance because then it's not about exactly what pen somebody is using and that's a great ink like this one is a great ink. I hope you got something out of this video, and if you want to be able to follow me over on Instagram, I'm there as an ink guy. Thanks for watching.